Good morning, River Church. Uh, I'm Pastor Billy, and I'm going to be with you this morning. I am so glad that you are able to join us. Uh, we're just getting ready to get started. Um, this would be a good time for you to grab out maybe a, a piece of paper and a pen, something to write with if, if you want to take notes. Uh, if you wanted to maybe get another cup of coffee, now would be the time to do that. Again, we're, we're so glad that you are here, and uh, we will begin shortly. About every year I get into this high energy kick where I want to do all the things. I want to accomplish everything there is to accomplish. Uh, I want to learn Spanish and so I'll get my Rosetta Stone out and, and, I'll, and I'll log back in and I'll try and learn all the words for Spanish. Um, I'll be determined to be a better citizen and so I'll want to subscribe to the, to the Brownsville Herald and just be, be current with what's going on in our city. I will um, I want to start reading my Bible more, so I will get in uh, with my Bible app, and I'll get into a plan, and I'll, and I'll follow this plan. And you know, I'm just I'm just committed uh, to be to be a better a better person, right? I want to get in shape, and so what I'll do is I will take all my clothes off the treadmill, and I will use it as a treadmill instead of a drying rack. Um, but I do all these things because I want to be. A, a better person, right? I want to try and just maximize uh, just myself and my, my, my abilities and all of these things. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I developed this list of all these things that I want to do. And uh, I'll open up my Google Calendar or however I jot this information down, and then I'll start to plug in uh, these pieces, right? And so I'll put Spanish for 15 minutes this day and exercising for, you know, 30, 45 minutes this day and, you know, read the newspaper every morning and and, and, and I start to do all of these things, and before you know it, my, 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 my schedule begins to fill up. Quickly, my entire week uh, becomes filled with things to do, right? On top of all this, uh, I have a family. Uh, I have my awesome wife and my two kids. Um, I have a job that I have to, to go to work and, 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 and provide for my family, and, and I also have my responsibilities here at the church, and so I just get really, really busy really quickly. Uh, my schedule doesn't leave time for much really of anything else. Um, I hardly have time for my family. I hardly have time for my friends. Right? I don't have any time for anything really that'll be an inconvenience uh, for myself. I get so fixated on myself that I neglect anything that doesn't add to my bottom line. Uh, and that includes people. Right? I will engage with the people uh, based on how they will benefit me, how they will help me. Uh, but, I, but I neglect or I ignore, I push away the people who will inconvenience me, who will make my life more, uh, more difficult. Maybe, maybe you can relate to that. Maybe, maybe you have those people, those relationships that, that you just, oh my gosh, this person is calling me, or oh, I can't talk to that person right now because it would be better for my time if I spoke to this other person, right? So this issue that we're talking about, uh, of this, this, this partiality, this favoritism, is rooted deep in the letter of James, right? And it's, it's, it accurately describes uh, what, what his, his audience, what his recipients are doing. With this, we're going to jump in, into the text, and we're going to be in James chapter 1. Uh, the end of James chapter 1, we're going to uh, carry over to James chapter 2, uh, but we're going to uh, do it in, in sections, uh, so we won't do all of it at one time. But we're going to start in James, the, the, the end of uh, James chapter 1. And it's verses uh, 26 and 27. <clears throat> it reads, If anyone thinks he is religious without controlling his tongue, his religion is useless and he deceives himself. Pure and undefiled religion before God the Father is this, to look after the orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained from the world. 
Now, he, he talks about this pure religion. Now, many of us have an unfavorable opinion of the word religion, right? You, you've heard it, and, and there's just kind of, there tends to be this negative uh, connotation around that. All James is saying here by the word religion is he's basically saying, or ba what, he, what he basically means is it's our outward actions, right, based on our inward beliefs. So, so our outward, the things that we're doing, uh, just matches what we believe inside. That's, that's, that's it. He says pure religion, right? Uh, the pure religion is, is when they match, right? <clears throat> so that's basically, basically what, what he is saying when he uses that word religion, right? James is telling them uh, that the religion that they're acting out is impure and defiled, right? It's incorrect, right? He's, he's saying pure religion looks like this, and, and you guys haven't been doing this specific thing, All right? He talks about three things for, for, for a, a, a pure or, 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 or uh, when he's speaking into religion, he, he highlights three things. The first thing is what we talked about last week, and and that is being able to control your tongue, right? Uh, this next part what we're going to focus on today is, is caring for the widows uh, and the orphans, right? To visit them in their distress. And then the third thing uh, is, is, is keeping yourself unstained from the world. But, but, but today we're going to focus on caring for the widows and the orphans. So, so James is telling them that pure and undefiled religion is to care for uh, the widows and the orphans, right? James's audience, 2,000 years ago, right? They, orf, orphans and widows were a burden to society, right? Uh, the fatherless, the, 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 the women who did not have husbands, right? Maybe they were elderly and, and, and they were getting older and their husbands uh, were passing away before the wife, the wife was, right? They were a burden to these people, right? The, 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 the child with no father was a burden to society. And, and James is saying pure and undefiled religion is to visit these people. Now, he says, he says widows and orphans, and, and God's heart is definitely for these people, but, but that's not all James is talking about. It's, it's, it's all of the vulnerable people. It's all of the people that are an inconvenience to our lives. It's all of the people who have nothing to offer. Right? He continues, and in, in this next chapter, he continues kind of along this theme, right? Uh, James chapter 2, verses 1 through 7 says, My brothers and sisters, do not show favoritism as you hold on to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if someone comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and dressed in fine clothes, and a poor person dressed in filthy clothes also comes in, if you look with favor on the one wearing the fine clothes and say, sit here in this good place, and yet you say to the poor person, stand over there or sit on the floor by my footstool, haven't you made distinctions among, yourse um, among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Verse 5 says, listen, my dear brothers and sisters, didn't God choose the poor in this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom? that he has promised to those who love him, yet you have dishonored the poor. Don't the rich oppress you and drag you into court? Don't they bl blaspheme the good name that was invoked over you? So, so James was just talking about caring for uh, these helpless people, and then he goes into this story, and he's saying we're doing the exact opposite. We are showing favoritism. We are favoring these specific people. The people with the nice rings, the people with the nice clothes, the people that could benefit them. It's not right. It's not right. Now, a question you might have right now is, you know, why were they favoring these people? And I believe 
part of the answer to this, uh, to this question is what we see in James chapter 1. Uh, the, 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 James says, Count it all joy when you experience uh, trials of various kinds. Right? These people are a troubled people. They are a tried people. They are exhausted. They have been dispersed. They are scattered. They, 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 they feel that the only way, the only solution that they may have to better, them li- to better their lives, to get out of their situation, is to, to befriend the people that will help you. So, so how, do we, how do we respond to this? Uh, let's, 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 let's see what James says next in chapter 2. Uh, chapter 2, verse 8, it says this. Indeed, if you fulfill the royal law prescribed in the scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing well. So he's not saying, he's not saying necessarily to, to hate the rich person, but he's, what he's saying is the way you treat this person is the way you need to treat the poor people also. Love your neighbor. Right? Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. You might be asking, well, well, Billy, who is, who is my neighbor? Who, who is my neighbor? Is it, is it the widow and the orphan? Is it the the poor person who is my neighbor it's a great question it's a question that that was asked to jesus lord who is my neighbor it's it's in luke chapter 10 uh luke chapter 10 is a story of the good samaritan and they asked him, and, and they asked Jesus, they said, Jesus, who is my neighbor? And Jesus goes on to tell this story of, of this, this, this story where there was a Jewish person who was beat up and robbed and left on the side of the road. And this, this, this Samaritan who helped this Jewish person out. But, but, but the interesting thing in the story is this, this, this Jewish person was beat up, right? And then a, a, a priest walked by, a Jewish priest walked by and, and, and stepped on the other side of the road to avoid this Jewish person, right, of the same, uh, of the same race, right? And then a Levite also avoided this person, someone who you think would help him avoided him. But it was a Samaritan who stopped to take care of this person who was basically on the side of the road left for dead. Now, this, this story just seems like this, this really nice person who, you know what, I'm walking along. I'm, there's a person on the side of the road. Let me help him. Right? But there's, there's significance. There's weight to these two people. Right? The Samaritan and the Jews they hated each other. They hated each other, right? The Jewish people thought that the Samaritans were scum, were the scum of the earth, right? They were, they were alive on earth and they were destined for hell, right? Um, they, they were, they were, they were the, the, the ugliness of society, right? There was that tension between these two groups. And what do we see this, the Samaritan who goes to uh, this, this, this Jewish person who was on the side of the road. He just got robbed. He was left for dead. Nothing to offer the Samaritan, yet the Samaritan goes to him. Right? Uh, and I'll read, I'll read it to you. Verse 3, 33 says, But a Samaritan on his journey came up to him, and when he saw the man, he had compassion. He went over to him uh, and bandaged his wounds, pouring olive oil and wine. Then he put him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and continued to take care of him. Right, the next day he took two denarii, right, took some money, and gave it to the innkeeper and, and, said, and said, continue to take care of him. When I come back, I'll reimburse you for whatever extra you spend. 
Right? So, so, so the good Samaritan was committed to take care of this person. After this story, after Jesus tells this parable in verse 36, he says, Which of these three do you think proved to be a good neighbor? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, to prove to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers. The one who showed mercy to him, he said. Then Jesus told him, go and do the same. So, so who, who is our neighbor? All right, we talk about this. I talk about this thought. Love the Lord with all your heart and soul uh, and, and love your neighbor as yourself. And, and we, we, we have to ask ourselves, well, well who is our neighbor? Is it the person next door who lives next door, your, your literal, literal neighbor at your house? Sure. But in this context, our neighbor is the person who has absolutely nothing to offer to us. The person who needs you at exactly the wrong time. The person who cannot help himself. Take an t- Take a moment and think. I'm sure there is a person who is coming to mind. It's, it's when you have your, 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 your day completely scheduled and you have all of these things that you want to do to make your life better and then that one person calls and you're like, oh my gosh, I cannot help this person. I do not want to help this person. Uh, I'm convinced everybody, we all have that one person in mind. And and you might be thinking, you might be thinking, there's there's no way that I can help that person. There's there's nothing I can I can offer that person. And I would say, you were that person. I was that person. We were those people, the unhelpable. We were the inconvenience. We were the ones that were left for dead. In Ephesians chapter 2, uh, we see this. It says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you previously walked according to the ways of this world, according to the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit now working in the disobedient. We too all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires, carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts. And we were by nature children under wrath as the others were also. We were those people. Verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with Christ, even though we were dead in our trespasses. You were saved by grace. He also raised us up with him. So not only were we dead, he raised us up and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us, in Christ Jesus. For you are saved by grace through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift. Not from works so that no one can boast. Get this. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Which God prepared ahead of us. Ahead of time for us to do. God called us to himself. He brought us in. He picked us up from the side of the road, left for dead. Calls us to himself to send us out. To send us to those who have nobody else. It is through us, Christians, that Christ is displaying his goodness to the world. So, so what do we do? What do we do from here? What do we do with this information? I want to give us three quick application points. 
how I think we can take what we, we've just, uh, uh, just read in Scripture and, and, and we can apply these to ourselves in Brownsville, Texas. James says to, to visit, to visit the orphans, to pursue the orphans and, and the widows, right? But this, this idea of visiting, of being intentional. Okay, so application point number one is per, pursue the fatherless. Okay, Psalm 68, 5 says, God is a father to the fatherless. We live in a city, in a country really, but in a city of broken homes. There are a lot of people who don't have daddies. God, you, God is a father to these people. We should, we should pursue these people. And so application point number one, pursue the fatherless. The second one is pursue the widows. Pursue the single parents. Not because we can gain anything from these people, because God calls us to love these people. And there's beauty and joy in that. Now, this, this could be a, the, a, a widow. It could be a, a single parent. It could also be, as, 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 as we talked about earlier, it could also be uh, may, maybe an elderly person whose husband passed away. Who would be a huge inconvenience to take care of. It would be so much easier to let someone else do it. Let's pursue these people. And lastly, I'd like to say, let's, let's pursue the ones who have nothing to offer us. I've asked you uh, multiple times throughout our time together to be thinking about you know, who that person is. Who is that person in your life that always seems to ask for help at the wrong time? Now, I'm not, I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you uh, to always subject yourself to maybe manipulation or uh, abuse or this this very um, ugly type of situation, but I am saying that we need to pursue these people. We need to care for them. Uh, in closing, I would like to read the last few lines of the Good Samaritan parable. Uh, it's in Luke uh, chapter, chapter 10. And it's, uh, it's verses 36 through 37, and it reads this. Jesus asks him, Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? They answered, The one who showed mercy to him. Then Jesus said, Go and do the same. I urge us, church, to go and to do the same. Let's pray. Jesus, you are good, Lord. You have pursued us when we were not worthy of pursuit. You found us in our brokenness and our helplessness when we had nothing to offer, Lord. You found us there and you, you called us and you brought us in and you called us your own son and daughter. You cared for us when you had absolutely nothing to gain from us. You still pursued us, Lord. Thank you for that, Father. Lord, I, I pray that you empower us to go and to do the same. I, I pray that, that we remove the filter or, or the blinds, or, or, or we, we remove our, our self-serving interests of loving other people and caring for other people. And I pray that you just give us the power and, and the, 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 the care to love people the way that you have loved us. Lord, I pray that, that we find great joy and satisfaction in doing so. 
Lord, I pray, I pray for the helpless in our community. I pray for the hurting in our community, Lord. I pray that, that, that you, you comfort them, Lord. I pray that you use us to comfort them. Thank you, Lord, for, for putting us in Brownsville, Texas, Lord. Uh, we love you, Jesus, and we pray these things in your sweet name. Amen. Uh, we're now going to continue in our time of communion. Uh, if you haven't done so already, now would be a great time to go get some juice and, and some bread, maybe a cracker. Um, but now would be the time to do that. On the night that Jesus was to be betrayed, he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. He said, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper and said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Praise God for this, for what this symbolizes, his death for our sins. Uh, you, may, you may eat communion. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I, before we depart, though, I'd like to say just a few things. Uh, one, uh, I would love for you to continue in your giving. Uh, it's very easy. You go to www.riverchurchrgv.com, and it's super simple uh, to, to find out uh, how to give on, on the website. So um, go do that. Yeah, it, it's all there. It's pretty, pretty simple to do. Uh, another announcement is uh, we're going to be having Women of the Word this week. And so uh, uh, every, every Wednesday night we have had uh, either Man Church or Women of the Word. And so this week uh, it's, it's, it's time for the ladies to meet up. And um, my wife comes to that. She loves it. I know the ladies who, are, uh, who, who do come to that, they have a great time. So I would encourage you, if you haven't come, uh, to, to, uh, to, to consider, consider participating in Women of the Word. And you can do that in two ways. Uh, the first way is, is we actually meet here on uh, Wednesday nights uh, in, in the church building, and everything's spaced out accordingly. So, um, but, but you can come here, or uh, we also have... A, a, a Zoom host. So basically, if you don't feel comfortable coming to church yet, you don't want to be around uh, everybody just yet, um, you can also uh, log in through our Zoom, and then you can join uh, the Bible study that way. It's super cool, really interactive. Everybody can hear each other. Um, so yeah, two ways to, to do that. That's on Wednesday night uh, at 7, 7 to about 8 o'clock. And, and then the last thing I want to remind you all of is our prayer gatherings on Tuesday night. Um, both myself and, and, and Pastor Randy and, and many of you uh, join us on, on, on Tuesday night. And it's just, it's a real joy to my heart uh, to be able to just share my life with people and, and other people share their lives with me. And, and, and it's, it's really cool to hear each other's prayers and pray for one another and for the city. It's a really, really, really sweet time. So... Um, Tuesday night is our prayer gathering. It starts uh, at 8 o'clock. And, and then Wednesday night this week is Women of the Word. And for both of these, you should be getting emails uh, during this week. River Church, I love you guys. Uh, I'm excited to serve you guys in this way, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all soon.